Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. Nikah Mubarak, Mubarak, Zawaj Mubarak, Mubarak. An Nikah min Sunnati, Ma Qala al Nabi wa Sahih. Nikah Mubarak, Mubarak, Nikah Mubarak, Zawaj. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another episode in the series of Marriage and Divorce. With me here is our Sheikh Khaytham Al Haddad, who is based in the UK and currently sits on the board at the Sharia Council of Britain. He's also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We concluded the last episode talking about the condition of witnesses when it comes to the nikah. We covered, or were about to cover, the issue of technology. So I would like to continue on that. In terms of witnesses and technology, what do they have to witness? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala Rasulillah. Yes, this is the question. As we said, that all schools of thought agree that we need a form of witnesses. The three schools they said we need the witnesses to attend the meeting. The Malikis said that we need witnesses to attend to know that this marriage took place. Yeah, of course, the Malikis discuss this in more details because, for example, a person might lie and might say, "Well, I got married to this lady," and then people start talking about it. This person got married to this lady, and he's her husband, and this is a marriage. No, no, no. They have more details. That's why we say that even the Malikis they never said that don't bring witnesses. They never said this, but they said, if the marriage took place, see, we have to be careful, my dear brothers and sisters, about what the fuqaha said, because sometimes some schools allow something. There is a difference between some schools allowing something and some schools obliging it. Mm -hmm. So the difference between saying it's allowed and saying it's wajib, it's an obligation. Yes. And when normally when they say that it is allowed, it means that if it happened like this, then it is valid. So it's not the first thing you should do. Yes, that is perfectly the statement. It is not the first thing that it should not be your first choice. So, the Maliki said, if it happened that there were no shuhud, no witnesses, but it was known without a shadow of a doubt that. This person A got married to B, and this is a marriage. Then that is enough. Now, using technology or telecommunication, yes, advanced telecommunication methods to carry out a nikah. Can this happen or not? I would say that it is very, very problematic. So it's best to be avoided, or it should not be the first option. It should not be the first option. If it were to be carried out, then it should be carried out by experienced people, and they should take enough measures to ensure that the requirements of nikah have been met. I'll give you an example, my dear brothers and sisters. You need to listen. You need to listen carefully. Now, Skype. Yeah, Skype. I am here. Yes, and the wife I want to marry, or the sister I want to marry, is in in England. Now I am facing the the Skype, the screen, and she is sitting with her wali in England. Okay, the wali has to see me. I have to see him. I have to see her as well. Okay. Moreover, the witnesses have to witness me in that. Meeting, meeting her, and meeting the wali. And this discussion has to be finalized, and all of us 
seeing each other and aware of each other and finalized on that meeting. And everyone would know that this is for the purpose of marriage. Part of marriage. Okay? That in some, in extreme circumstances can be done. But I always say that the person who is doing it, okay, has to know what he's doing, basically. And it should be the last resort. And having said that this can be done, I'm not saying go and do it. I am not saying go and do it. I say this, what can be done. Now, other than this, where we all are seeing each other, okay, me and the wife and her wali and the witnesses, we can all see each other, not just listen to each other. Yeah? As I said, this can be done. Other than this, I don't think it can be a valid marriage. For example, many brothers and sisters ask about marriage over the phone. How it can be marriage over the phone? I cannot see her, she cannot see me. I cannot see the wali, and the wali cannot see me. Yeah? So really, you don't know who... Who on the I other am married end. to, who is the wali, and is he really the wali or not? Okay? Again, the case of the Skype, as I said, it should be done by a person who knows what he's doing, because he needs to verify that I am, I am. Haytham al-Haddad is this person. Yeah? And there is no possibility of cheating. And the wali, his name is Saeed Abdullah. He is Saeed Abdullah. He was identified. This is his passport. And his daughter is Layla. Yeah? Or Khadija. This is Layla. We have identified her. And it was proven that she is his daughter through the official documents. It is not a joke. Can this be verified over the phone? It cannot. In fact, I have so many stories of deception of so-called marriages taking place over the phone. Yeah? Especially between brothers and sisters, they do it themselves. Mm. One of the cases that I came across, a sister wants to get married to a brother, they agreed, etc. The sister said that her relatives are not Muslims. Yeah? Then they said, if they are not Muslims, who is going to be your wali, etc. Then she said, I think... One of my uncles, I remember that he accepted Islam. Yeah? So get in touch with him. She got in touch with him. And he said, yes, I am a Muslim, etc. They went to the imam. And the imam is a friend of mine. And the imam carried out the nikah over the phone. He contacted the so-called wali, the uncle. Are you so-and-so? He said, I'm so-and-so. He said, and this is your relative? He said, yes, this is my niece. So-and-so. Do you accept her to get married to so-and-so? He said, yes, I do accept that she marries so-and-so. Now, the imam haven't seen the wali. Moreover, haven't seen that the wali have enough official documents to prove that he is the uncle of this sister. The imam made another mistake, which is how That this person, yeah, is the uncle of this sister, one. Two, has he verified that this person have seen the husband and he's happy with the husband? Or she said to him, I want to marry so-and-so. As a wali, if I am a wali, my daughter wants to marry so-and-so. Without knowing him, I will accept the marriage. This would be strange. It cannot happen. Yeah? So, this is another big mistake the Imam done. Anyway, what happened? They consummated the marriage. Subhanallah, that case, they said on the same day they consummated the marriage, within 24 hours, the lady, you know, after, after the desire is gone, gone, yeah, then the reality comes. And this is a statement in Arabic, by the way. When the sakra goes, the reality comes. Sakra means intoxication because of 
whatever reason, because of a desire. So when the desire is done, is gone, then the reality comes. What is the reality? She said to her husband, darling, I want to tell you a secret. Okay, what is that? She said, the man was not my uncle. I hired him from the street. Oh. This is a genuine case. And the man, the husband, he became so furious. Of course. He said, forget about marriage, valid or invalid. She lied. And he left her because of this. Yeah? And now she's grieving because of what she has done. Okay? We have so many cases again. Marriage over the phone. Have you verified this? Have you verified this? Have you? No. How do we verify it? So that's why I always say, make it simple. If the wali accepts you to marry his daughter, the wali lives somewhere. He should go. If he lives in a Muslim country, he should go to a court, a Muslim court, and rights power of autonomy, where he delegates the power, yeah, his power to someone else. Yeah? And he has to bring that certificate. He should write this in a court, proper court. The court has to stamp it. And then this stamp has to be verified by the officials, the home office or the exterior ministry. And then it should be sent to the other country. Okay? And this is what is done in many Muslim countries who know what they are doing. At least this is more of a, a safe way of knowing that everyone who should be who they say they are. Because, see, in that power of delegation, the name of the person will be written. Yeah? The mahar. If there are conditions, no conditions, and so on, everything is clear. So that is the proper way of doing it. I'm not saying that this is the safest way only. The other way might not be valid. The other way might not be valid. We have to be careful about this. Inshallah, we will continue talking about further details after the break, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, please return and join this discussion with us on the issue of witnesses. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al -Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. I created the universe to him. Appreciate the word to word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran. Tonight at 11 pm and repeat telecast at 12 pm India on Peace TV. Osama El Shami. How can we get our children ready for the month of Ramadan? Sharing the stories of what the Muslims have been through in the past, in particular the first generation. Nazir Irfan Al Mujahid. Make this Ramadan, this Ramadan very special to very them. Special to your taqwa, your righteousness, your goodness. Why should you tell me about your experiences from the very first Ramadan that you experienced as a new Muslim? The first Ramadan I experienced was amazing. Umar Debua. When I embraced Islam, it was like I was prepared, you know, Allah prepared me for something that I had no idea. It was an amazing experience. Beautiful. Beautiful. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to our program, The Straight program. Path. Build your character on the path of the Quran and Sunnah in The Straight Path.
next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to this talk with myself and Sheikh Haytham al Haddad on the condition of witnesses during the procedure going through to the nikah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We started to talk about witnesses. I want to get onto the conditions, if you don't mind. What are the conditions of the witnesses? What do we need to ensure is in place? Yeah, this is a good question. This is a good question. The witnesses mainly, okay, uh, they should be, first of all, Muslims. Yeah? They should be also adults. Adults means they have reached the age of puberty. You cannot have a child as a witness. But, for example, in the West, an adult and puberty is something that they don't differentiate yeah, in, in the right true. way. That's why I mentioned adult means have reached the age of puberty because of this confusion. So it could happen that there is a 13 or 14 year old who could be a witness if yeah, they've reached the age yeah, of puberty. If he has reached the age of puberty. Okay. Sharan, yes, is qualified to be a witness. Okay. Thirdly, he has to be a man, a male. Female witnesses on marriage contract are not accepted. Okay? Then, fourthly, he has to be a sane person. Yeah? So, Muslim, adult, male, and sane. Sound mind. I want to get to the point of... Sound mind, I'm saying sane. Sane. Because sound mind means he's intelligent, he's reasonable, he's... Sound mind, or maybe you say sound mind, but what I mean, aql, sane. Sane. So he knows what he's doing. Yes. Yeah. He's not uh, insane. He is not mad. He does not have mental illnesses that prevents him from understanding what he is doing. The issue of women not being allowed to be witnesses. I mean, this is going to be. Some people might be shocked, but why? This might be seen as discrimination. We don't want to get into this discussion. Anything can be seen as a discrimination. Any distinction between the rules for men and the rules for women is discrimination. According to this, yeah? If pregnancy is discrimination because women are created to conceive. We are not created to conceive. Subhanallah. This is discrimination. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. From Allah, can we say this? Of course not. When we talk about rights and responsibilities for each gender, then we say discrimination. If we distinguish between both of them, yeah, akhi, yeah, the way women are created and the way we are created, there are common things, but there are fundamental differences. It doesn't mean, okay, that the way she is created is better than me. It doesn't mean that the way I am created is better than her. But from certain angles, me as a male, I am better than a female. From certain other angles, the female is better than me. What's wrong with that? Now, we as men, are we equal in all angles? Not from all angles, no. 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 I am better than you in certain things. You are better than me in certain other things. Full stop. Okay, why do we consider any kind of distinction, yes, as discrimination? Why don't we say that this is discrimination against men? Subhanallah, this is ajeeb. Yeah, any distinction, they say they understand it from their historical background because you know that women in the West were discriminated against and they could not secure the right to vote. As they say, this is the basic right for people living in democratic societies, the right to vote. They could not secure this except after the suffragette, I think after 1918, yeah? And not all of them even allowed to vote. And after all of this, then they got equal rights to men. Maybe from their perspective, they don't have any other formula of how to treat men and women. We as Muslims do not know something called discrimination. We have distinction based on 
the creation of each entitle him or her for certain rights and oblige him or her for certain obligations and the duties as simple as this I mean yeah? we know we know so that this is an advanced formula I mean we know Islam is a way of life and it's, it's perfect from every angle so we're not saying that stuff for like anything is wrong but I mean for from the audience point of view is there a reason why men and women differ in terms of witnesses see, see brother Daniel I don't want our audience and myself to justify anything Islam says we don't need to we don't need to this what Islam said accept it of course this increases our Iman if we know the wisdom behind it but it should be the right wisdom not just an imaginary wisdom it should be the right wisdom okay Allah Jalla wa ala said in the Quran huh? When Allah Jalla wa Ala was talking about witnesses for financial transactions, yeah, for financial transactions, which according to scholars is the only area for women to witness, yeah. For example, the witness or the testimony, the testimony of women on crimes from an Islamic perspective is not accepted. Yeah, the witnesses, yeah, or the testimony of women on marriage issue is not accepted. Okay, according to all scholars, it is not accepted. They have their own area. What is the area? Transactions, financial transactions. Okay, Allah Jalla wa Ala said, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُونَ رَجُلَيْنِ فَرَجُلٌ Okay, وَمْرَأَتَانِ مِمَّنْ تَرْضَوْنَ مِنَ الشُّهَدَى أنت ضل إحداهما فتذكر إحداهما الأخرى. So Allah جل وعلا said for this sale transaction you need two male witnesses من من ترضون whatever you accept. Yeah. So you accept them. Then Allah جل وعلا after that said that فإن لم يكونا رجلين if there were not two male witnesses فرجل وامرأتين a man and two females. Allah Jalla wa Ala explained this by saying, "Anta dilla ihdahuma fa tudakira ihdahuma alakhra." If one of them forgets, yeah, or was confused, then the second one will confirm her testimony. This what Allah Jalla wa Ala said in the Quran. We have to accept it. That's it. I really don't want to go further into this in order just to justify anything in Islam. There are other things that I will explain them in details. But this particular issue, it is clear, direct in the Quran. We, as Muslims, should not be ashamed of it. No. We should not hide. Subhanallah, ashamed of our religion. Yeah? Allah knows. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows and we don't know. So what Allah Jalla wa'ala says to us is the truth, is the ultimate truth, is the only truth, is the perfect truth. So we should accept it. Before we go for a break, is there anything else, Sheikh, you would like to add in terms of the, for the witnesses? Okay, so we mentioned the first condition, which is what? Muslim, and it should be male, and should be sane, this is a clear, and should be adult. Yes. Okay, adult means I've reached the age of puberty. This is enough. Now, there is a fifth condition, which is al-adala. Yeah? Al-adala, briefly, if time allows us. We have about a minute left. Okay, if time allows us. Al-Adala means the person is a trustworthy person. Okay. Many classical scholars mention some conditions, detailed conditions. No need to get into that. If this person is known, generally speaking, that he is a trustworthy person, خلاص. Alhamdulillah. But to apply all the conditions that have been mentioned by classical scholars on each and every single individual who is coming to witness, yeah, or to testify, it is impossible. So let us not get into it. Yeah. Please return, brothers and sisters, for the continuation of the discussion on the conditions of what makes the nikah valid or possibly invalid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.